in, in the master lie and thus in all lies, there's operating principles. All of them have the same thing. Every lie works on the same really two things. Distortion and doubt. Distortion and doubt. That's where lies really work. That's where the master lie worked. If there was a, a, a doubt that was seeded into Eve, and then the truth was distorted, and so she made a distorted choice, and we're all still paying the price. What an amazing thing. And the distortion can come now from many variations. Maybe it's fear. How many people make bad decisions in their life because they're ruled by fear? I must do this or I will cease to exist or life's going, the sky will fall. Fear. Uh, it might simply be an imbalance of truths, things that are actually true. This is, this is big. If you look at, I go back and look at most cults that were kind of a spin-off of Christianity in some way, they don't believe in a lie. Even to the point, you know, those folks who, you know, with a box of snakes and they take in and do their thing, it's not that it's a lie. You can find a Bible verse that relates to what they're doing. It's just out of context. It's out of balance. When we take even true things and take them out of balance, you can end up in some pretty crazy places. It's a way lies work. Uh, it might be, as we looked at, overwhelming social momentum. How many things are now true in society today just because everybody says it. Somebody says, somebody writes an article, if you don't believe this, then you're a terrible person. Or if you don't believe this, you're stupid. Or you're unenlightened, you're something. All because of everybody says so. Everybody says so, so it must be true. Um, distortion then comes in, the whole thing. The past can be distorted. Oh, let's rewrite what history was. Or then the future becomes distorted because it's like a weed, you know, is that as the present becomes distorted, the roots go down and try and give us another version of the past and distort it. And then the branches reaching up to the, to the future are then distorted because we have a false impression of the past, of the present, of ourselves, and even the future. We don't even understand ourselves. Lies can come as a stabbing whisper from a single individual, or they can come from the roar of an entire society at you. They come from different ways, powerful, all from the master lie, all the same dynamics coming at you. And here's another thing, lies, the powerful ones tend to be, is invisible. They tend to be invisible. There's a chemical that is called the poisoner's poison. And uh, it, it was the, uh, drug, uh, the uh, poison of choice for the KGB when they wanted to take someone out. And it was uh, Saddam Hussein. It was his poison of cho choice that he would use on people. And for this reason is that you could use it to slowly kill someone and they would never know it. It was colorless. It was tasteless. That's why I kept bringing things up. Just like this, this bottle. In, in its purest form, it's kind of gray. It looks like... Um, um, uh, lead almost in color, but in solution it would it could be in this water and I wouldn't know it. I think I was drinking nice fresh water, and, and it was actually laced with this stuff. And since it's colorless and tasteless, and I take it, they could use it in two ways: either they could mass dose you and take you out like that, or little by little, and no one would ever suspect. It was a drug that it became common for a while because it was found in rat poison. It was a drug called thallium. Thallium. And it was just an amazing thing. And the only way, you know, I could be taking this in this water and never know it, and all of a sudden, life would become very poor, but I'd never, I wouldn't understand why. <coughs> I'd start coughing like that, and then I would drink some more of it. And... And the more I drank and not suspecting, I would become more and more ill, more and more ill. And the only way I would know, I wouldn't know to stop drinking it. That's the point. I wouldn't know. The only way is that if I was somehow smart enough, discerning enough, that I knew the symptoms and I said, that poison is getting in me some way. That's the way lies are. <coughs> That's the way lies are. The, the thallium of Satan 
is lies. You don't know. They're kind of invisible. They're just, they're just kind of there. They're odorless and tasteless. They're just in the mentality of the culture unless you're looking for the symptoms. And when you see the symptoms, and the main symptom will be this, in the case of, of lies, ultimately they will take you away from God. They will take you away from God. I'm just too busy. I'm distracted. I'm just too tired. I'm just, well, everybody else is doing it. Nobody else is doing it. Something. You know it's a lie because it takes you away from the source of life, God himself. You wouldn't know unless you know the symptoms. And that's the number one symptom. Discover it. Then you can stop swallowing. Then you can stop swallowing. Going back for a moment to, to where we started today, imagine even the garden. What if she had simply stuck to what she already knew? She already knew it. What if she simply would have stuck with what she already knew? Uh, imagine if she would have not listened to Satan. Where might the world be today? All began. They always begin the same way. Every lie we swallow is, is just a variation of the master. Just a variation of the master's lie. <coughs> Satan lies to us now. Everyone in this room, undoubtedly, there is some lie trying to work its way or has worked its way into your life. And it'll probably be something that you never suspected. The closer they are, that's the worse it is. Practical example. Somebody sabotaging their faith or their spiritual walk because they have an anger inside. Couldn't tell that person, you know, you got an anger problem because they get angry at us. <laughs> you know, you, couldn't, you wouldn't dare share. The only person who's going to let them know is the Holy Spirit working in them. Or maybe, just maybe, if the Holy Spirit works properly through you, and you, you might be able to say something. But the lies that are the closest to us will be the last ones we see. They'll be colorless, and they'll be tasteless. And they'll be all around us. And the things that we'll tend to take for granted, I wonder what it is. What is it for you? What is it for me? What things could be leaking their way in? What are you going to do about it? Well, let me offer a, a one suggestion, because there's not a one answer to everything. It brings me back to the whole devotional issue. You know, the whole thing is, and, and this is my take on what a pastor is, a pastor's job is not to feed you. I do not believe that. I believe a pastor's job is to teach you to feed yourself. That's when your faith becomes something. Yeah, sure, you get some training. That's what this is all about. The devotional idea was this, really. It's, it's amazing. When something starts taking you off course, if you spend even a few minutes a day looking at what God uh, really thinks about things and you take yourself and refocus even just for a few minutes but every day, every day, not once a week, every day, and then you act on what you know. You know, the whole idea of a Christian walk is to live out what you know. So there should always be something we're going to do. There, there should always be a next step. 